I'm 16 years old and pregnant and I haven't told my parents. I'm actually five months along. What should I do? My parents are extremely strict. If you think your parents are strict, you haven't met mine. From the time I was a kid, I was never allowed to go to sleepovers or even go to friends' houses. All my friends had to come over to my house. Luckily, my parents are pretty cool and I do have fun with them. But I quickly started resenting them. Here's the reason I think they're super strict. My mom actually ended up getting pregnant from my dad when she was 16. So they were super young. And of course, they didn't want the same thing to happen to me. I guess I kind of understood why they were strict. When I was 13, I decided I would start sneaking out to go to parties. All of my friends had parties and I was the only one that was never allowed to go. So I actually got pretty good at sneaking out. I convinced my parents that I would go to bed early. Then I would have a backpack ready and I would just sneak out the window. Luckily, I'm on the first floor. Part two is up. I'm 16 and pregnant and I haven't told my parents what should I do. I got really good at sneaking out of the house to go to parties. Eventually, I started sneaking out almost three times a week. Anytime anyone was having a get together or a party or when I was asked out by a boy. My parents had a strict rule that I could not date any boys, especially spend any time alone with them. But this boy at school that I really, really liked asked me out. Apparently, my friends made sure to tell him that I liked him and then he said that he liked me. So there was no way I was going to pass up on the chance to just hang out with him. I was 15 and I had never been kissed. So I snuck out of the house just like I did every other time. We actually met at a park and just talked for like two hours. Then he walked me home and everything was pretty innocent. I even thought about telling my parents, but I decided not to. But this boy quickly started pressuring me into doing things that I wasn't ready to do. It's not like I was sneaking out with the intention to do anything. I just wanted to have fun. But he started asking me to wear different clothes, and I did. He even asked me to get a belly button piercing. Part three is up. I'm 16 and pregnant, and I still haven't told my parents. And I'm also five months along. That's when this boy started pressuring me into get a belly button piercing. I started changing the way that I dressed, and he started pressuring me into doing things like kissing and touching. At this point, I was still sneaking out of the house almost every single night to see him. That's when he started pressuring me into going to his house instead of the park. And I said yes because I didn't want him to break up with me. When I told him I didn't want to go all the way, he told me that there were plenty of girls in school that would happily take my place. So we went all the way. At this point, I was 15 and I had just gotten my period. By the way, I didn't even tell my mom about my period because I thought they would freak. After two months passed, I didn't get my period. And I thought that was normal. I had literally no idea about periods. Then another two months passed and no period. And that's when I started feeling really sick. And I thought, well, I might as well go get a test. And it was positive. When I told the boy, he broke up with me and told me that I probably did it with somebody else. I feel like I can hide the whole pregnancy because I'm pretty skinny. My mom's asking me why I'm wearing big clothes. My parents will literally kill me. What should I do? Am I wrong for turning down a family vacation because I would have to pay and my sister wouldn't? My 28 female parents are organizing a family holiday abroad and have approached me stating that they will be paying for my sister's 30 female holiday but not mine. This is because to them, I can afford it and she cannot. And this is the only way we would all be able to go on vacation together. They can't afford to pay for both of us. They said that it's their money and they can do as they wish with it and that I am in a good spot financially right now and my sister isn't. If I ever find myself in a bad spot, they will help me out. But to me, it's not that simple. I am more financially stable than my sister because I have chosen to live in a cheaper area despite being further away from my friends, followed a career path where financial security is guaranteed and always live well within my means. Whereas my sister has followed a career path which is unfair, I admit, underpaid, insisted on living close to her friends despite the high rent and likes to spend more money on her lifestyle. My parents think that I am lucky that my passion lines up with a well-paid job and my sister is unlucky that her passion does not. So my sister deserves more help due to that bad luck. They also think that I am lucky to have a partner that I can move away with to a cheaper area and my sister, who doesn't currently have a serious partner, is unlucky in that respect so it would be a greater deal to move away from her friends and therefore again unlucky. Again, they insist if the tables turn around and our fortunes are reversed, they would help me out. Am I the asshole for refusing this holiday and choosing one with my friends at the same time instead? If the money thing wasn't there, I probably would have chosen the family holiday. But I just feel like my frugal decisions are now being punished and that this is unfair. I am not angling for my parents to pay for me too and i also feel bad for kind of suggesting indirectly my sister pay for hers but i still feel really hard done that my sister is being coddled and the fact that she spends quite a lot on a day-to-day -day basis much more than me is being rewarded my parents and sister think I'm being money hungry and not very compassionate to my sister's unlucky love life and underpaid profession. This is stopping us from going on a vacation with all four of us, which is upsetting my parents. Okay, here's the thing. I think it's petty for you that you, the only reason you don't want to go is because they're paying for your sister. Realistically, that doesn't that, that's none of your business. What they do with their money is their money. They're inviting you. I don't think they should have just they, I don't think they should have told you that information because if I'm going to pay for one of my kids, who, I don't care what anyone else says. It's my kid. I don't have to pay for anyone I don't want to pay for. You're in a good spot. If you want to go and you know, you'll, you'll have a good time, go for them. I admit they are enabling your sister. That's just the reality of it. And she's going to be stuck in this kind of situation longer than she should because of that kind of stuff that's happening. But if you if you're in a good spot and you can't afford it and you want to go, don't don't be 
you're kind of bitter that well you're paying for my sister and you're just you're just coddling her which is true but just have a good time like live life don't stress yourself out Am I the asshole for telling my stepsister she can't wear my mom's wedding dress? I, 16 female, grew up without a father. For a long time, it was just me and my mom. Last year, my mom got married to my stepdad, Brad. Brad has two kids, Tessa, female 26, and Jake, male 18. My dad passed away shortly after I was born, leaving my mom in mountains of debt. The one thing she refused to sell was her wedding dress. She always talked about how it was her dream for me to get married, wearing her dress or at least her veil. It's a gorgeous, simple white dress with a long lace veil. My dad had the dress handmade and designed for my mom before their wedding. When my mom remarried, she still refused to sell the dress and got a new dress for her wedding to Brad. She always talks about that dress being mine. Tessa got engaged last week. She was so excited to show off her ring and talk about her wedding plans. Am I the asshole for telling my stepsister she can't wear my mom's wedding dress? Tessa knows how much the dress means to me, so while talking about her wedding with my mom and Brad, she threw out the idea of wearing the dress my mom saved for me at her wedding cause quote it'll save us so much money my mom brought up the fact that she wasn't comfortable with that since she was saving the dress for me but brad said my mom should agree since she now has two wedding dresses and i can wear the other one tessa also pointed out that the dress would need so many alterations to even fit me since i'm much shorter than my mom and i'm not as thin as my mom tessa also said it would be years before i need it so it wasn't going to be an issue my mom was on the fence about it but brad was all for it and pulled the dress out of storage and handed it to tessa Am I the asshole for telling my stepsister she can't wear my mom's wedding dress? I freaked out and grabbed the dress out of her hands. I told her she wasn't allowed to wear my mom's dress and that she can get her own mom's dress or buy her own, but she wasn't allowed to wear the dress my mom is saving for me. I locked myself and the dress in my room. All day, my mom has been texting me and coming to the door asking me to come out and to talk to her and Brad. Brad has been calling me spoiled and selfish, saying that I'm acting like a huge brat. I just can't let some stranger wear the only thing of my dad I have left. I feel bad. Tessa is really upset. She's been crying and texting me, asking me to apologize and give her the dress back. I can't tell if I'm in the wrong. Brad and Tessa think I'm being an ass, but my stepbrother and friends agree that I should stand my ground. I offered to let my mom live with me under the exact same terms I lived with her as a teen. I don't know why in God's good name my mom thought I would be the one to come to. We don't get along. I went to live with my dad at 16 because she told me that she hated me and kicked me out. My older brother, the golden child, I know for a fact has a spare bedroom she could sleep in now that she's losing the house. My mom's situation is entirely her own fault as well, which makes this all the more annoying. She and my stepdad bought a seven bedroom house 10 years ago, right after she left her job of 20 years to work at some stupid startup that was out of business in only three years. My stepdad spent the last years of his miserable life bed bound because he ignored every doctor telling him to stop shoving his face full of food at every waking moment of the day. So he died at 500 pounds and in misery. Well, when he died earlier this year, it pretty much drained the last of the money that my moron of a mother had remaining, and now the bank's taking the house back. So, she shows up at my door for some reason. After mistreating me since I was a kid and ignoring me unless she wanted something since she married that thankfully dead Lanwell, she had the nerve to ask to live with me. It's only me and my husband in our two-bedroom house, sure, but that spare bedroom is his office, and the basement's my art studio, and the couch in the front of the fireplace is for our lovely cats. There is no room for that wicked hag anywhere in this house, but I knew this opportunity would never come again, so... I told her that she could live with us if and only if she decided to follow the house rules. All electronics were to be turned off by 6 p.m. If she was caught with any after that, they would be taken away and sold at the next yard sale. Bedtime was 7.30. If I caught her up, I would take away all of her clothing for the week. She may only shower for five minutes once every three days. All chores must be done at the moment she wakes up. If I roll out of bed and they're not done, she will not be getting meals for the day. She must make sure that she is alert at all times. If I and hubby need something done, it has to be done at that moment or else she will lose her bedding privileges for the night. She will be in charge of cooking one meal each day that I choose, and if it's not made to my liking, then she will not be allowed to join us and instead will eat the cheapest frozen meal available. I will be reading all of her mail, text messages, and emails. I will give her the ones that I deem acceptable communication under my roof. Her car will be my own personal travel car. She will also drive me wherever I want. She will still have to pay for gas. And last but not least, if at any point she displeases me, I will be calling my brother to pick her up from a nearby gas station. I will get to choose what she takes to put him in a torn up backpack before dropping her off without looking back. She called me a monster and told me that these conditions were inhumane and asked if I was insane. These were the exact conditions I lived under for years as a teenager. The exact conditions she tormented me with for years until she finally let me go live with the one parent that loved me. And these would be the conditions that she would suffer under if she dared to ask me to home her worthless, joy-sucking soul. I don't know where she went after she stormed out of my house. My brother called me and told me that I have the biggest balls in the family for the son that I pulled. From the sounds of it though, none of this bond want the brood mother to live with them. I hope she finds a nice park bench to stay on.